How's it going, everyone? How's it going, everyone? Happy Thursday and welcome to Changing Lives, hosted by me, Deontay Burden. Uh, hope everybody's had a, uh, uh, had a great Valentine's Day. You know, we skipped that and everything because I didn't want to get beat up or anything. So, <laughs> about that beat up. <laughs> hey, she actually said, you ain't got a show? <laughs> I ain't finna flaunt that That's test. A yeah, there you go. Here, here you think I am. I ain't finna fail that test. And everything, but uh, we're back here and everything. We want to um, uh, welcome every everybody back to the show. Um, uh, been an exciting two weeks, a lot of stuff has happened and stuff. Um, of course, Valentine's Day done came and went. Hope uh, two men of my fellas out there didn't go too broke behind it, but you know, hey, <laughs> time to recover and everything, you know. Right in time to get that income tax check, and you know, <laughs> hope that add back to the kitty and everything. Um, we are probably three and a half weeks in the tax season. Uh, my company, I'm Majestic Business Service, we're doing pretty good this tax season. Still want to invite everybody out to come check us out. Uh, again, that's Majestic Business Services. I'll give more contact information uh, in regards to that. Uh, give a big shout out to both to all four of my sons. Uh, my older son Torian, he's branched out with his uh, company TAF Sports. Okay. He's uh with his personal training biz. He's uh he doing pretty good with it. He be doing pretty good with that. Okay. And uh he has this little weekly challenge thing. And the other week he did it where you had to bend over one leg, and pick a piece of paper with uh with your mouth. Oh really? And his yeah, and his last one this week, he was did like a holding a ball and spun it around and caught it. Man, I'm gonna broke my neck trying both of that <laughs> shit. So. And I'm not. And he said, so the challenge is people post their own videos uh -huh. to to show them doing it. And I ain't finna put my damn blooper shit out there. <laughs> so I'm, uh, delete that. Yeah, exactly. So I'm gonna wait he gets something a little bit more uh, uh safer <laughs> before I uh, post mine. Like so. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Walking in a straight down line. So uh, shout out to T and uh, TAF Sports. Make sure you follow him on Instagram. Uh, also, my my second son, uh, PJ, uh, you can check him out at Chet Styles on Instagram. He's uh, just as clean, well, just as smooth, rather, with the Clippers as he is with those scissors. So he's okay, okay. getting a smooth so cut and, and hooking the ladies up. And he's also doing those custom wigs and everything. Oh, yeah. uh, Junior walk around with a knot in his pocket. He walk around he with start, a knot. Yeah. He start doing the videos like I told him. He, he, he's, doing, he's doing a whole lot better with the videos, okay. a lot of pictures and everything. He I actually, know. if you go on his uh, Instagram page, Chet Styles, he has a whole video you know where it's all uh, going at hyper speed mm -hmm. doing uh doing the hand and everything but you know he, yeah yeah he a bad man he a bad man uh and to my third son christopher you know he's mastering fortnite okay. and uh <laughs> <laughs> well we all gotta do something <laughs> that joker there he uh he's tried to do his little thing with uh with selling his brownies and everything the issue comes up is kind of like that old west side saying you can't get high on your own supply so <laughs> shit for every brownie he sell, he's eating another two or three and everything. Look, he's trying to give me a call now. So big shout out to my brother, uh, my twin, Christopher, with his brownie making. Right. And we are going to circle back to the last one, uh, my baby boy, William, who was supposed to co-host the show with me uh, tonight. William uh, informed me at the last minute he has a show to do. He has a black history program he had to attend so he couldn't uh go to the uh go go to uh come out here with us today so big shout out to william and uh his black history program i got the news about 20 minutes ago he did pretty good they were singing and um had a good program over at student elementary so shout out to all four of my boys i'm real proud of them and glad they're doing what they're doing right now we um uh, uh, also, yesterday, I want to give a shout out to Legacy Brothers Cigar Shop. They're one of my neighbors uh, near Majestic on Highway 85. First time there. I've been in my spot 
11 years over there, the office on Highway 85, my first time stopping by there. I think my brother said they've been in business about three years at that spot. Real good spot. So when you get a chance, check out Legacy Brothers Cigars on Highway 85. It was it was pretty good. It was pretty good. They, uh, they treat me real right up there. I think the owner named Cowboy, real good brother. Had a good okay. time there yesterday and everything. Um, and again, lastly, uh, this is Deontay Burden. I'm the owner of Majestic Business Services. Like I said, we're three weeks in the tax season. Uh, everything's going pretty good, but it can always be better. <laughs> so please, 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 you know, give us a call at 678-479-4007. Again, that's 678-479-4007. Or reach us on the web at www.majesticbiz.com. And when you go to the website, if you can't get in contact with us, you're in a rush, you can't make time to make a phone call, you can also, we have a scheduling app on the website. Hit on the calendar, book your appointment. Everything's good to go, okay? With this week's show, this week's show, we got a real interesting st- show because what I want to talk to parents about because it's um, a common occurrence when kids graduate from college and, and, and go around, it's a joyous time. But building up to that point, I want to ask one solid question to the parents. What are you doing for your kids to make sure they're able to go to college? Because um, a lot of times... We push academics and push everything in our kids and say they're doing well and everything like that. But when the time comes that senior year, do we have we properly put a blueprint and plan to put those channels and plans for our kids to go to college? And I'm going to start with a, a story in regards to myself. This is probably the first time I realized <laughs> that my family didn't have any money. We got like my senior year, and I, I remember like yesterday, and um, it's probably that November, no, December of my senior year. And keep in mind, I'm the first person in my family to go to college. So when the time was coming up and everybody thinking about schools and stuff like that, I went to my mama like, hey, mama, you know, I'm thinking about going to college. So she just hit me with that left hook like, okay, cool, you want to go to college and everything? She just started rubbing her hands, and that's her automatic uh, sign that she's uh, getting nervous as hell. She said, well, what I can do, I might can't get you to go in the fall, but maybe I, you know, get a little overtime, get a part-time job. We might can get you to go next January, the following year, uh, to start our school. And I'm just sitting here like, what you mean? You ain't got no money? And she's just like, no, no, no. Well, we ain't got no college fund. And I'm hearing about all this stuff I done heard about the the – the counselors talk about it. Some of the other kids, probably from middle middle class backgrounds, growing up. And keep in mind, I grew up off Bankhead Highway, right, and right, my, right. you know, my mom was just glad they they were glad that I wasn't selling no dope. I hadn't been in jail, and I was getting ready to graduate. Mm-hmm. So they were cool with that. Right, right. So I could have just did anything. Just could have worked across. Yeah, that. rode on that. Work walk across street over there. Came on. I worked. They would been content with that as long as I ain't giving no headaches and everything. And that bad is just how it was. But I was just sitting there like, we really ain't got no damn money. And I called one of my partners up, and he's just like, yeah, man, I'm going through the same thing. And he's just like, shit, we really ain't got no damn money. You know what I mean? We poor. Right. You know, that, that, that was my little come, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> come to Jesus <laughs> mode. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. So I, I remember like we yesterday, we got it probably like that second week of January. Sergeant Black, he was the recruiter over there, the uh, Armory uh, recruiting officer at Greenbrier. Shit, sorry, Black, come on. He had been poking at me mm-hmm. all my senior year. Man, come on, man. I uh, I commit, signed, delayed entry in the Army that January of my senior year, man. Left two weeks after I graduated. I ain't looked back. You know, it was, uh, uh, I knew then it was just totally on me. Mm-hmm. So I uh, took classes the whole time I was in Germany. Um, yeah, when I got out of the Army for active duty status, still went in, finished it, worked school, you know, went to school at night and everything, worked it from there. And um, what I wanted to talk about with the show, just going into it, because, you know, what I initially talked about, so many parents say so much in terms of, you know, hey, you come to your kids with the, 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 the normal sale. Mm-hmm. You know, do what you're supposed to do. Go to school, get your education, get your education, and everything like that. And the kids do it. They do everything mom and dad tell them to do. They're good students. They ain't getting in trouble. They got the grades. They did everything possible mm-hmm. that was told to them. They, they, they did the sale, right? So then the time come, we get to that junior, senior year, you know, <laughs> mama, you know, hey, we're going to go on these college tours and go to this, that, and that. And mama done forgot all that shit they told you about 10 years ago, ago. <laughs> you was in elementary school, you know. 
Oh, that, that whole they say, really you yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. what you shut the hell up. Yeah, just do what you're supposed to do and everything. And you did it. And now you, it's, it's come to fruition. And yes, Junior, you want to go on campus tours and everything. You're taking ACT, your SAT, doing these different clubs. You're ready to get ready to go to school. And mom and dad are just trying to, you, 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 they're not as excited about it as you. And you're trying to figure out what's going on. Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to see what we have to do and all this other kind of stuff. And it's very deflating on a kid mm-hmm. when you sit there and sold this bill of goods that if you do this and take care of this, we'll do that. Mm-hmm. And the challenge that's why we brought about this show, parents, you know, when you make that sale to your kids about doing everything, um, what are you doing to make sure that happens? Right. Because a lot of times, especially in terms of the parents or even educating themselves, people don't even know. Mm-hmm. They just think. You know, you go to school, get good grades, you get a scholarship, or if you do this or you play ball, uh, they, they have all kind of misconceptions about how college, you know, to get to college. You know, we ain't even talk about how it is once you get there. Right. But properly, not necessarily even, you know, uh, preparing your kid to be in school, but more so even preparing to try to get them to be there. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's what I want to discuss with tonight's show, just kind of go over what happens a lot because that is a very uh, – it can be a very hurtful situation, excuse me, from the kid and the parent. Because if you, especially your kid has done well mm-hmm. and everything, and you, it comes to that point where, hey, we want to do this, we want to do that, and you can't do it. Yeah. And w- what I want to do is kind of go over some things, misconceptions, uh, some, and also get some strategy for parents to follow. And also the, uh, certain mindsets and game plans you can do going forward. So if you haven't done it, you know, no matter where you're at in your child's uh, life in terms of just, say, infancy, um, a toddler, adolescent, preteen, teenage, you know, different strategies we can do to kind of, you know, uh, mitigate how hard that's going to hit you, mm-hmm. okay? So um, first, what, what I kind of want to do is kind of uh, chart out uh, a path that, you know, most people can follow to help you with going through everything. And I looked at... Uh, it's four basic pathways that everybody can take, and that's saving, athletics, academics, and the dreaded student loans. <laughs> so we're going to kind of start out, we start talking about just with saving. You know, with, uh, a, with saving, you know, it, it, there are different things you can do. There are different products out there for parents to follow. Now, when we start talking about saving, I think realistically, you know, the best thing you can do, I, well, not realistic, ideally, the, the best thing you can do is, I mean, hell out the infancy. You got, hell, 17 years to start allocating money together. That's probably the best time to do it. Right. Now, you ain't got to sit here and be putting up uh, 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 10000 or $1,000 a month, but getting it's some really kind of game plan. what the kid's going to specialize in. You don't know that at the infancy, but you do. You got to get an idea of it by the sophomore year of high school exactly what they're going to pursue as far as their career because each career costs a little bit more in college. You know, people don't realize that, you know, everything that you choose to do in college costs, some costs more than others. You know, if you want to be an attorney, that's $115,000, you know, you know, to get that degree. You know? a- absolutely. <laughs> and, and, and I'm going to tell you something now. This is my, my personal philosophy. My personal philosophy is at least, at least, worst case scenario, at least be able to try to cover your kids first year of college mm-hmm. worst worst case scenario now again i'm not saying have harvard or yale money set to the side but i think having a good 20 to twenty five thousand dollars, you know set to the side for your child is a good worst case scenario worst case scenario amount a good 20 because that pretty much will cover your mid-tier local state school because what is what is UGA like nineteen twenty thousand for local? I think for state something yeah, like that. Like, yeah, so twenty. I think it's gone up to twenty four. Twenty four. Okay. It's twenty four thousand uh, for UGA. Georgia State. Of course, of course, Georgia Tech's more. Yeah. Georgia State. I think Georgia State is a little bit less actually. Okay, and and because it's the state, Georgia uh, UGA is a little bit more, but I'm, I think they're around between twenty and twenty four thousand for gotcha. the two state and, and Georgia. Uh, University of Georgia and Georgia State. Gotcha. Um, 
Georgia Tech is uh, more. <laughs> yeah, that's, we that's automatic. That's forty to fifty to sixty thousand dollars a year, depending on what you specialize in at Georgia Tech. Yeah, and that's the same kind of realm like with Emory mm-hmm. and something like that. Something like that. So again, I wouldn't necessarily say, okay, hey, if you got to be looking at that, but if you can kind of get that twenty grand or something like that set to the side, I think that'll uh, be able to cover pretty much all your little smaller uh, schools, HBCUs, your very smaller. Uh, Two to one thousand enrollment colleges and everything we have those options covered for at least that first year, and so we look at the path of, of saving on our first option. You have you know starting off with your basic five twenty nine plan. Your, your basic uh, my brother Dominique went to grad school. He remember Clay State is a lot cheaper. I think Clay State's round about I'm, about fifteen grand or something like that. It's kind of the same with Fort Valley and everything. Yeah, you know. Uh, uh, I, I was going to say something about the, the smaller schools, but I figured you would get into that eventually anyway. But, mm-hmm. you know, Kennesaw State, all those states are a little bit a little bit um, less. Um, and like me, from being from Chicago, we had a college. It was a community college mm-hmm. called Kennedy King College, and that was significantly less. less. You know, uh, still get the same quality inf- education, maybe a little bit less as far as the whole, you know, shebangy bang of college because mm-hmm. it was a community college. You basically – went to college a day or night or something like that and then work you know the other hours so yeah it's a little bit a little bit less but it's actually still getting the same education it's just the fact that you don't have the prestige of a uh georgia state or illinois university of illinois or, or something like that the paper's still the paper the paper's still the paper the paper's still the paper you still got to interview just like they do yeah exactly and everything <laughs> but we've gone with this first um option in terms of savings number one key to it with everybody and i haven't stated it's just about being proactive we want to get out of a reactive mode and be proactive because we know it's coming. You know, when we just like when you look at the weather, man, they tell you the rain is coming. You walk out there without your jacket on, without your umbrella, and you know it's damn rain, that's on you. So the same situation. You know your child's going to grow up. You know your child possibly will, you know, want to go to school to further their education, get some kind of skill set. You know it's coming. Best thing to be proactive. And so that's what we want to give you these strategies today to help you out on that path while your child is growing. Uh, in, the, in terms of savings, we're going to start off initially that 529 program. And basically what a 529 is a, is a state-sponsored program. I think I don't know if all 50 states have offer a 529 program, but that's just a – They just uh, – I think what happens is it changes names from state to state. It seems it's still the same premise. But all of them, ha- all of them all offer one. All, all, all of them offer one. Some of them are more upfront than others. Got you. Some of them you got to search for, but it's uh-huh. there because I think that response that is – Pay for it through federal grants. You know? Got gotcha, you, got gotcha, you, yeah, got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. Yeah. So you know, in, in essence, with the five twenty nine labs, asked my question because I didn't know if all states offer it. You know, there are uh, state based uh, saving plans for uh, for college tuition, and basically, what happened when you fund those plans? Uh, one, I think it's common for most of them. You'll be able to write that deposit. Cause I know the state of Georgia is two thousand uh, dollars deposit you have per year per de- uh, depositor. Uh, it doesn't matter if you know, five people put in two grand, all five people can write that two grand off mm-hmm. and they go into that uh five twenty nine saving plan for the state of Georgia. But that's a product that's out there that you can be allocating for that. Uh next we have a we're allocation allocating a certain amount of money each month. You may be putting in a hundred, two, three hundred dollars, whatever you feel at that particular point in life. But also keep in mind when we do that, we uh want to make sure we're effectively allocating a certain amount to kind of get to that common goal. And like I said, I stated that 20 grand, I think, is in, in off the cover. Tuition, room and board, maybe meals and everything. And keep in mind, tuition is doing one thing, and that's increasing each year. Every year. You know, so that's something to keep in mind. So inflation is going to cause the tuition to go up. So what it is now, you maybe want to forecast to be in by the time your, your, if your child's a baby, by the time they hit 17, Maybe add another five ten thousand dollars to that total um, with that. And lastly, when we start talking about saving, I think an easy rule of thumb, you know, it's the accounting in me. You might get a ballpark number, just say about that twenty grand. Um, you know, there are, and I'm sorry, I can't add off the top of my head right now. You multiply twelve months times seventeen years, divide that number up into that twenty thousand, and that'd be a monthly allocation each month for you to have. Keep in mind, you got compound interest. If you got it in a certain saving account, you may have a little bit more than that set to the side. So th- from a saving aspect, that's probably the easiest. The key will be with saving. It's just like with a lot of these, but this one in particular, you got to be disciplined. Mm. And I understand 
you know, things happen in life. But we're still talking about something that can be a, a tornado if you're not really prepared for it. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so that's what we want to uh, want to cover in regards to uh, saving. The next is uh, athletics. And that. athletics is, uh, it has exploded probably in the past, I would say, 10 years. Mm-hmm. I can kind of look at my older son who had a football scholarship to Vanderbilt in terms of all the stuff and how that was just going and with the camps and everything. And to those five years after when he was in college, how that whole landscape of uh, sports training for kids, camps and all that kind of stuff. I mean, this stuff has went crazy. Even the actual uh, ap- youth apparel business mm-hmm. has like quadrupled and everything because it seems like everybody has this thing that my son's going to be the next this, that, and that and everything. And how you can actually foresee, you know, your child <laughs> Being able to get their kids the best of everything, we all biased. Oh (laughs) man, they you know, and and people putting a lot of money with that. Now, I will say this um, initially, you may see some kind of athletic prowess in your child and say, Okay, hey, they're doing pretty good. And uh, you get to a point where say, Hey, listen, we want to kind of invest in this because we're hoping this can happen. Keep in mind, keep in mind, keep in mind, it's still a hope because you don't know how your kids gonna turn out, you don't know what their interests are going to be, you don't know the situations that they can't control what will pop up later in high school. You get, mm-hmm. you know, certain coaches, certain arenas, uh, certain competition, you get injuries and everything. But even with athletics, I do think it's a, a, a solid course if you have everything else stable in terms of the academics, uh, the whole way around this other child going up. But I know a lot of times people look at that as a solid path where, you know, you're putting the money behind the trainers, the tutors, uh, the different travel leagues, the everything to make sure your child is in a competitive environment, they're growing up, and the athletic prowess is, is is getting better and everything. And that can actually total to be a, a, a substantial amount. Right. If you start talking about, say, you're on a travel baseball team, you pay three grand, and you're doing that, say, spring ball, fall ball, now you done paid – probably 6000 a year, and now you sit there, you maybe done chopped up one year of tuition and everything yeah, like that. I was that. just about to say, you, you got to take into consideration the money you're spending in order to get him to that point to get that scholarship for college. you mm-hmm. spending the money you could be saving to get him to where he needs to be for for the scholarship for college, and he may not get the scholarship, and you still out of the seven to $8,000 you just spent, <clears throat> maybe more than that over the years, to get him to be, you know, because most people start out in, in the, what, the Pop Warner League and yeah. stuff like that and try to work their way up, to, uh-huh. you know, to get them better and better over the years. So you got to think about all that money, all those dues and expenses and, and all that stuff in order to get them to the point to where a college team is actually looking at them in order to recruit them to give them a scholarship. And there's no guarantee they're going to get a full scholarship anyway. The, You know, the, I think the thought process should be that you will look at getting – Money towards, or from, from all the way from money towards to a full scholarship. Right. You know, so now that money towards may just be books and maybe room and board and everything like that. Now, keep in mind, I want to say this too, you know, before we go any further. I won't, I don't want to say everything we're going over now is a gamble, but you, it, in essence, you don't know, mm-hmm. you know, and everything. But here's the deal. At the end of the day, it's just like with your car insurance. We can pay car insurance every, you know, Third, you know, pay three hundred dollars a month for your car insurance. That's thirty six hundred. You know, you can pay that for twenty years, never have an accident. Mm-hmm. You don't pay for that. Well, what Chris will call it in case shit. There you go, <laughs> in case shit. There you go, there you go, there you go. So it, it's just like insurance. And at the end of the day, if that seventeen years come and they to choose not to do it, you can do it for something else. Mm-hmm. But in my mind, uh, I think it's too big a gamble. To skip over. Now, if you turn around, your kid wants to, you know, gravitate to something else. Excuse, excuse me. Say like acting, which I know still have lessons in terms of that too. I'm trying to just think something they probably needed. Maybe a smaller, just a technical school. It's only going to take a year or so and be uh, less expensive. When you kind of see them gravitating to that, you know, my baby like fixing on cars. My son couldn't do hell, you know, and everything like that. So um, I'm uh, in my mind personally. I look in terms of 
I want him to go get his business degree. And the reason why I want to look at doing it, I still want him to get his cosmetology license, mm -hmm. is that I've had a salon 12 years, and I've seen dozens of salons open and close for one reason, one reason alone. Most of the salon owners don't know business. Yes, Most of these barbers, exactly. They got the yeah. degree and went right into the business. Exactly. They have a creative minds, but they're not rational enough to hold businesses. Mm -hmm. So they're so stuck on, you know, you go into a barber shop, big screens, the leather seats, and all that kind of stuff, and doing all this kind of stuff. But they know nothing about forecasting, mm -hmm. nothing about projection, nothing about just doing breaking even or anything like that. Same thing with the salons. You got the angel families. I've been in that same spot. It's 12th year that I've been in that salon. They, I've probably had 20 of them, like I said, open and close. And they just, you know, I've seen them, and they look nice. But they're not even thinking the money they've put up to get that salon looking like that. It's going to take me about two years just to get that back. Not even got nothing to do with, you know, we're talking about the business, people yeah. leaving yeah. and coming and whatever and everything. So I want him to know, have that kind of foundation. Part of it, looking at daddy, see the headaches daddy have growing up. And also just you getting some kind of business foundation to look at it. Because, again, I think a lot of times people – do as much as they have been exposed to do. You got some kind of forward thinkers that are bright people, but the more you're exposed, because you get in the right arena, and I, and that's what I do think about with college. College is not necessarily about getting education. College is about learning critical thinking skills because you run a lot of people kicking a lot of different ideas, and you're learning to think. You're learning how to communicate. You're learning how to interact with a lot of different people, and you're learning to see, okay, this, that, and that. And I think that's what you get a lot out of college because everybody's going to get a degree. But when you're in an arena where everybody's thinking and like you have to learn how to kind of – Get quick, get it, fast. It, it, exactly, exactly. And that's what college uh, gives you. So uh, the thought process, my thought process, and I might be totally off with that, is that, you know, it's not about you going, you know, and learn how to open your salon. It's for you to know how to open a chain if you want to get your own uh, hair care line, if you want to get your own um, – uh, scissors. scissors tools exactly and everything that's to kind of give you that basis on how to market it how to brand it how to operate and function it and that's what in essence you'll learn that going to be in the school so that's my thought process with that with me and him are still we ain't in contention with doing that he sees it but he doesn't have that clear picture to it we got another year and a half hopefully by the end to, to, to do that because he strictly just wants to go to cosmetology school and he probably won't have that long to do it because he's been doing this in the ninth grade and everything to get it done. But like I told him, you can still be getting the miles while you're getting your degree. Mm -hmm. Worst case scenario, get, scenario, rather, get you a two-year from, say, Atlanta Metropolitan. Just get you a basic associate's. You get a foundation. You know I what I mean? It, I, think that, I think he loves doing hair so much. You know, he loves doing hair. Mm -hmm. But he needs to realize that eventually he might get tired of doing hair. But what's, the, what's wrong with having a business degree, running the business, and that way you can have other people doing your salon, you running that business, still making money from it. And then when you do do hair, it costs that person two or $3,000 because you are specialized. You just, you special. You get what I'm saying? Absolutely. For you to come in the salon, you you ain't getting you ain't getting off your chair for less than a thousand, two thousand dollars, but your salon's still making money because you're running it as a business. See, a lot of people don't realize that you you, you might love doing certain things, but eventually you might get tired of it, or eventually you might want to do something else, but you still want that business to make money. Well, even with the point of this show, with well, tonight's show, to your point, as a parent, we're always looking uh big picture with everything with our kids. We look at 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road for our children. Our children think about today and maybe tomorrow. <laughs> and maybe tomorrow. You know, so uh, to your point, like, look, this is what y'all can get from it. And they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. But they think it's a game because they're young. Because when you're young, you feel like you got, what, so much time. But you don't understand time fast forward. And, and yeah. And, and, and kids, you know, I call it you for ignorance. Because we all been there before. Mm -hmm. And we always, we all living there. If I knew then, if I knew then what I know now, mentality we all feel that way mm -hmm. and when you start kind of getting in your late 30s and 40s here now you sit here like okay you, you look at life totally differently because a lot of the stuff you have done in those first 40 years of your life or 35 years of your life have impacted you positively or negatively you know and everything so you kind of want to make sure that your kids don't encounter some of the same things and they do have to have life experiences to mm -hmm. to, to kind of work yeah yeah figure it out and everything but Again, that's kind of like our job. Not spoiling, but just trying to want to guide them on that right path and everything. So, um, and, that, and I think we talked about that on the show. Just giving your kids the or maybe a, was it, a couple shows back, mm -hmm. giving your kids the opportunity to make decisions. Right. You right. know, and everything. But right now, we're, 
we're basically discussing the options parents can have to kind of get themselves in a situation where they're not stuck not being able to get their kids an opportunity in school. So first we went over savings, and then second we just went over uh, athletic options because, again, like I said, we got a lot of parents out here that are putting so much money in these trainers and everything like that. But keep in mind, keep in mind, we'll start talking about from an athletic standpoint, are you going to have your kid in a position just able to get an athletic scholarship to be able to, uh, from an academic standpoint, be able to attain it? Okay, that's one of the key components when we start talking about getting an athletic scholarship. You're still trying to go to a university that actually teaches, and some of them professors there, they can care less about sports because they work their whole career to be in that position. And you going there talking about you play ball, ba- basketball, football, baseball, they can give a damn about, yeah, it. about that. it. Exactly. <laughs> it ain't like Miss Johnson, your homeroom teacher, that, hey, baby, I know you had a game, you can make it back. All that shit over with. So, you know, that's one thing you need to kind of be preparing your, your child for also. Again, this is Changing Lives, hosted by me, Deontay Burton. Please like, share, subscribe to the station. Man, I don't even know, to the channel, I don't even know what show this is. We might be about 12 or 13. No, we, we, uh, we are 12. 12. Yeah, Episode we 12. Last, last week it would have been 13, but we didn't do one last week, so we were at 12. What? They moving quick, ain't they? Brother, I looked at that first show, and I was stuttering and bubbling. <laughs> <laughs> I was booging it up. But it, hey, we got through it and everything, but... Yeah, we uh, I, I want everybody to please go to the YouTube channel, Change Your Life, hosted by Deontay Bird. Uh, this is our 12th episode, but I've probably got another 10 to 15 one- to two-minute videos, a couple of uh, live streams we've done, a lot of good information on the show. And key with this channel, with this show, we want to be empowering people from a financial, a parenting standpoint, business standpoint, entrepreneur standpoint, anything that can make you better. Like I said, I, from the get-go, I have a lot of information in between my ears, and I really want to share that with everybody. So please go to the YouTube channel, subscribe, share it, tell as many people you know about it to please go to the the channel. A lot of great information there. Not saying that because it comes from me, <laughs> but I am saying it because it comes from me. Right. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. So again, we're going over the four strategies parents can uh, use to help them get to a point where they got funds for the kids uh, in order to go to college. The first one we went over was basic savings, you know, a different strategy we gave as far as savings. And next, then after that, we went to athletics. And then we had our third part where we want to talk about academics. Okay. Let me say this. I think a very, very, very big misconception about athletics, I mean academics, I'm sorry, is that, you know, my child is smart and they can get paid because they're smart. People want y'all to understand something about good grades. First and foremost, well, good grades don't necessarily constitute a scholarship, okay? Good grades get you accepted in the schools. Yeah, yeah. They don't necessarily get you the free rides. Now, you got a lot. What, what you have to understand is that you have less universities around than you have graduating students. So do a lot of kids uh, able to get af- academic scholarship because of grades and stuff like that? Absolutely. A lot of kids able to... Uh, get it because they've done well, they've joined organizations and stuff like that? Absolutely. But understand this. You start just say we're talking about UGA. Mm-hmm. What's, what's, what is it, like three five, three seven minimum just requirement to get a UGA? It's somewhere in that range. Uh, yeah, you got to have a – I want to say it's a three three five. Okay. GPA. Okay, and we just talking about regular damn student. Yeah, I think three, three five GPA. And, I'm, and I may be mis- – I think it may be a little higher than that, but I think that's because of the hope. If you do it with the hope, it may be a little bit more. You gotta have, a, I think you gotta have a three point three nine or something like that with, if you're trying to get it with the hope scholarship. Yeah, I'm not. It's kind of funny, you know. <laughs> but we still talking about you are gonna have to have a you decent three, student getting it now. Yeah. Now we just say at three five. Now we haven't put in all the other shit like 4-H club, captain of the Glee club, all this other kind of stuff. The little week did a summer trip in China, <laughs> and all this other portfolio that your child have to have in order to get accepted in these schools. And people just think about it. And I think a lot of it has to do with, uh, and I don't mean to rub nobody the wrong way, a lot of parents ain't been to college. So they just got these big-ass assumptions. He's smart, he can get it and everything like that, because I heard, shit, you in for a rude awakening. Real rude. You know, it's a lot of folks at Morehouse with student loans. It's a lot of folks, you know what I'm saying, at some of these major universities, Vanderbilt, Harvard, Yale, and everything, hey, they own down student loans. So trust me when I say this, um, 
the good grades will get you accepted into these schools. And they will have the prestige in it. But that doesn't mean it's going to get it paid for. You still got to make it happen. So I really want people to understand that if you're looking to go down that path of your child having, you know, getting academic scholarships, because they are out there. There are a lot out there. You need to be very, very, very aggressive with making your child this holistic portfolio for them to be able to attain that. Now I'm talking about, excuse me, they're active with a lot of different things in terms of maybe some af- athletics, but a lot in terms of different clubs, organizations, community base. Uh, they've done a lot of things to make them a well-rounded person for people to allocate money towards them and everything. So they're, again, don't just think because they're a good student that those things are just available. And also there are a lot of options in terms from uh, uh, you have a lot of scholarships available. Just if your kid meets minimum qualification from a grade point standpoint, some are very high. Some are just for average students. And, you know, a lot of essays you can uh, do, uh, a lot of grants available, some endowments. So, again, if it's you, if, if you're, you and your kid are set, to go down that path, I think it's one of the things you need. You and your child need to make sure that y'all go into a uh, go down that path, knowing that we're going to work hard to get you marketed as much as possible to get these scholarships. We're going to be writing hundreds of essays. You might not necessarily write that many, but you need to be mentally prepared to write a lot. Uh, do a lot of traveling to these schools, selling yourself, and everything like that. So. Um, those kids that do get those full 100% scholarships to some of the universities, they are very, very far and few, few between. Because some of them are racially biased. Some are gender, uh, gender biased. I ain't saying that's right. I ain't saying it's wrong. If, if somebody can get your hand, they can get your hand. Take how you can get it. But I just don't want people to have that false misconception that just because my kid got good grades, they're going to get an academic scholarship. You're going to get your feelings hurt real damn bad. You ain't your baby. So uh, if you heard, you heard the night, that ain't all they're going to need and everything. So you're going to need a little bit more with it. Uh, it does make it tighter because good grades at the end of the day is that barometer because that's what pretty much everybody want to see. Mm-hmm. We can't – if the grades ain't good, we can't even entertain the conversation to, to move forward uh, with anything else. Again, this is uh, Deontay Burden hosting Changing Live. Please make go, sure you go to the, the, the YouTube channel and uh, like, share, and subscribe uh, to, the, uh, to the channel. That's three point five for UGA, three point nine for UGA. Yeah, okay, that's what that's for that's for regular admittance or yeah. regular admittance. Okay. Yeah. I, so. Yeah, I was saying, I, and I thought it was three point nine because of hope, but I could sworn I, I said three point nine somewhere. Mm. So it's actually four point oh and higher for hope with the hope because hope wanted to be higher. Absolutely, absolutely. So all you big bulldog fans and stuff <laughs> like that, you want to get your kid down there? Shit. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Have them down on work study doing something and everything, but. Again, it's, it's it's not as easy as people think, and I. Uh, but again, when you get to that tier, you do have a lot of doors that are open to you. But I just don't want people to think that uh, just because these grades are here, that's going to make them um, unique. And, and, and it, they are good, but it's a lot of you out there. Just keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. There are less universities available than our graduating seniors, so uh, the numbers don't necessarily work for you and everything, but. They do work for you in terms of your, the, the number of schools don't necessarily work for you, but that great, those GPAs, high GPAs does work for you in terms of opportunities you can get. Now we go to our last option. It's probably uh, the least desirable option that parents, uh, parents and students have, but it's also the most chosen, and that's student loans, uh, mainly because people haven't taken advantage or even moved into us to the previous three options that we just talked about. Um, the good part about student loans, they're usually accessible. The bad part about student loans, they're usually accessible. <laughs> and, you know, you ha- I think you need to really, really be at a point where you know, okay, this is what we want to do. You know, it's what, you know, you and your child. And I, I think that's very hard because uh, a 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 year old mind is very damn unstable. And they all over the mm-hmm. damn place. So they really don't know what they want. So that's why I kind of, I kind of go at, at, at a crossroads in terms of you need to be realistic with your child, depending on where you're looking at sending them in terms of that. Now, if your child is on a trek, you know your child is looking to uh, 
get this certain degree and they're super focused and you know your baby that in your heart not you hope not you think not you pray you know your child is that type of student they're going to be on that track to take care of it i want to say i want to say too much sway away from it but you want to make sure that realistically they're going in the career field or opportunity field where they're not bare they can actually probably come out of that student loan debt no more than 10 years you know just just being honest with, with that but if you got an iffy miffy and you don't necessarily know and they don't necessarily know uh, I think if you're going to go that route, you probably want to start off at that junior college or something like that mm-hmm. to get a taste of that focus, you know, because, again, this can be a game changer for your child in terms of the mountain of debt that they can incur. Because one thing that I think a lot of people forget about, and it goes back to the other part I was saying for because a lot of parents have been to school, but if you been to school, you know, Shit, a year or two in, ain't nothing uncommon to change your major two or three times. <laughs> so you might then add it a year and a half, two years, maybe shorten it to your uh to your degree uh plan. So you don't damn, you know, you might that's another year or two of loans. Mm. That might be another twenty or forty thousand dollars put to that total. So that's why I say I I, I think you need to be kind of realistic in terms of before you send your child off, y'all have really had that conversation. Parents, if you have not attended college, if you have not, and it's kind of like great to you, don't feel bad, but do the smart thing. And I think go talk to people who have been, yeah. who have sent kids and talk to them. Get told some shit you really don't want to damn hear. Get told some shit that kind of disappoint you that you might be on the wrong path, on the wrong track. It's good information. Mm-hmm. You ain't wasting no time. You ain't wasting no money. Go talk to people. Yeah. I always say that's been a secret of my success. Uh, I always go to people and I look at people that's in the position that I want to be. You know, if you got your child on a full ride football scholarship, man, let me talk to you. What, what you do right, what you do wrong. If you go back, what could you change? Ask those kind of questions. Bring that up. Now, again, that doesn't mean you have to totally change what you're doing, but you're also putting yourself in a a, a, a situation now. You equipped yourself with what? What you didn't have before, knowledge. Because you can't go on some of these damn paths with, you know, just guessing. Because your child is your most prized possession. You don't want to juggle around with them. You don't want to juggle around with them. And you definitely don't want to. We talking about uh, student loans. Hey, we ain't talking about those. What is it? Parent plus. Parent plus. Shit, yeah. man. And put yourself in a situation with a parent plus on somebody that don't even know what the hell they want to damn do for sure. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. So, again, I think that's one path I think we need to kind of really do a a lot of information digging on in terms of what do our kids want to do, where they want to be, and realistically, can they can they achieve that goal? Because if you know you have that child that's very disciplined and everything like that, I, I wouldn't mind taking certain chances on them. I wouldn't mind taking certain chances on them and everything. It, pl- going back to the point I mentioned before, that whatever debt they incur, it's not going to um, – uh, it's something they can probably get on top of in 10 years. It's not something that um, they have to be digging a mountain just to get out of and everything. One, uh, Another point I want to kind of get into with, with parents, and in regards to doing this, remember I said, you know, this is like a, a, yearly, game, a yearly game plan, especially, you know, you, you want to start this as young as possible with your child, but when you definitely get to high school, starting that, June, that, that freshman year, I'm sorry, at high school, you're doing a yearly plan to sit here and kind of gauge where your kids at. Y'all taking the test scores. You're on the right track with college. You getting them ready for school, not just looking at, okay, they're on the right uh, college, uh, what is it, graduation track or the college track or you know, sometimes they have the um, vocational track. You know, you're getting all that stuff taken care of, but make sure you got the money side taken care of too. You're right. kind of looking at, hey, the numbers working in, in terms of that. So, parent, this is something on a, on, a, on a yearly basis. I mean, if you can do it, look at it monthly, quarterly, uh, twice a year, just to say, okay, are, we, are the numbers kind of working out? So, worst case scenario, I know I can send him to this school or that school. I can get that first year covered. So, if you're behind the eight ball, you wait till they're 14 or 15 years old, don't trip about it. It's just try to be aggressive as, you po- as possible. Mm-hmm. Try to be aggressive as possible. When you start getting at least that junior year, reassess everything look i'm probably maybe ten thousand dollars short what can we do then start looking what kind of college funds what kind of opportunities are there most schools aren't going to seriously look at giving you academic scholarships certain scholarships until that senior year because they don't want to sit here most of my schools even scholarship programs 
are looking to uh, allocate that money to kids um, that aren't seniors because you can get into that first, second semester of your uh, senior year and just lose your damn mind and the GPA drop. Certain things happen, right. so they're not going to allocate that money to you and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So remember, you got four years to do it. Really, three and a half, three and a half good ones. Where you talking about? Because they might not release them funds to after they graduate anyway, because a child may not graduate. <laughs> you know, so you got to be realistic. It, on that. It, exactly. So you have, you have time to do it. The earlier you start, the better. But you really don't have time to to do it. I'm a, can I throw one more in there? Absolutely. I'm sorry. Um, we talk about loans, but there is a, another way. Um, mm-hmm. Grants. You can get grants to go to college. Absolutely. People don't realize that. That's how I went to college. You know, my mama, I knew she did. I knew in seventh grade she ain't had no mm-hmm. money. So when I got um, my junior year in high school, I started looking into grants. How can I get? And those are those are grants for like, um, you know, um, kids in areas that are impoverished or um, where they have good grades, but the environment, the family, and all that stuff don't necessarily have the funds to pay for college. So it's a way to go to college without having to pay them because you don't have to pay them grants back. Absolutely. Um, it's just that you have to maintain, they, you have to maintain a certain GPA the whole time you're in college. Um, so people need to look into grants because if you're in an area like where it's an impoverished neighborhood but you have good grades and you are able to go to college and they think you are able to sustain, you have to write a letter. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to write a letter explaining them why and all this other stuff. What and, you know, send them copy of your grades from high school and all and all the stuff that you've done. And it's, it's like a resume. You basically, send them your resume, uh, and then they'll let you know about it. But you have to start looking into that early, like your sophomore, junior. I would say do it in your sophomore year. See me, I graduated mm-hmm. out of high school at fifteen, mm-hmm. but you know, my junior year, I started looking into the genius. grants. <laughs> you know, just uh-huh. because I knew I wasn't and I knew I wanted to go to college, but I just didn't know how I was going to get there. Gotcha. You know, so it was just a matter of, I knew I wasn't going to get in a loan because I'm thinking to myself, I don't even work. I, I couldn't work, you know, at that mm-hmm. age. I, I can work part-time at 15, but 16, 17, I would, uh, you know, so I started looking into grants, and it's it's, it's a hard process. Um, the grant, it's not easy. You have to look and look. It's probably harder now than it was back then because uh-huh. this is 1985. We're talking about, you know, 20 30 years later but it's just you just gotta dig through them it's fine and it's good uh, you go on the um you go on um dot gov go grants.gov mm-hmm. and they'll have a list of grants, grants. It's on and, there. and you just click on them and see what they what they're about they, and they all of them are about something yeah Some of them about you know toe inspection you know grant for inspecting toe uh-huh. you know um, they'll list who they buy. Like some of them, are, you know, Oprah has one on there. There's a few of them on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I would get it off the government site better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they mm-hmm. get grant. I mean, people get grants to go over, and and this girl got a grant. I was last year. I was listening to NPR. She got a grant for college to go over and taste different coffees in Italy. I mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you, you know that, that that's a real good point, like yeah. But you know something, I would. Me and General talking about this yesterday. One one important factor, though, a lot of times, you know, even with the grants and stuff like that, uh, even with a lot of these uh, scholarships, you just mentioned a component that goes with that. You can even have the grades, but the socioeconomic aspect of it, because, you know, I'm gonna be honest with you, it, it, it is if you're just say if you're middle class family and you your kids doing good grades, it's some opportunities you ain't gonna have there because some yeah. of your bigger scholarships. You know, the grades come there, but if, you know, maybe just a lot of them are based on this lower income. Mm-hmm. And then some of them, like I said, again, maybe gender gender bias, maybe race bias. But going to your point, what you just said, you have to be diligent mm-hmm. to look for this stuff. It is not nothing come easy. They and don't set that out there for you. Absolutely. And so overwhelming with the information, the, the longer you wait... Excuse me, the longer you wait to try to tackle this, the worse it'll be off because you waited and now you meet... It's like you try to go into... Uh, read a whole library on the weekend mm-hmm. it's not gonna happen so the more time you give yourself the better one thing i do want to hit parents with a guy and this is one thing i really want to bring in uh to speak on this because i was kind of listen uh i know killer mike was doing a, a a trek in terms of um the school the private school public school gig and everything mm-hmm. like this but 
one span that I was hitting on, I see a lot of people that put the kids in private schools. Mm -hmm. And again, this is just the thoughts of Deontay Burden. You know, I ain't trying to sway anybody, but I feel like if you're going to kind of put your kids, and I don't see a, a right or wrong way if you want to put your kids in private or public schools. The issue I think of it is, is that if you put your kid in private schools, you need to be very realistic that if that money that you're spending, it should be a return for it. Mm -hmm. Because it makes no damn sense to me for you to spend anywhere from eight to twenty thousand dollars a year and sending your child to private school and they end up going to Fort Valley or West Georgia or Savannah State. I'm not talking bad about those schools, but if I pay that kind of money, they need to be going to Princeton, Harvard, Yale, or Morehouse or Spelman. Mm -hmm. That's just being real is real. Because that was the damn school they could have went to if they'd have went to an APS school and not knocking on my APS graduate, mm -hmm. but because you went to the public school for doing that. And that damn money that you spent to go to the private school, you could have been holding that up to pay for some of the college tuition. I don't think private school, now I could be wrong, I don't have any bias against private school because, <laughs> you know, I went to PS 22. Mm -hmm. But, uh, it's a it's it's what what you apply to the classes and what you apply to school that will get your degree. You can be at private school and still be a dunk, you know, still fail. Yeah, it don't necessarily mean that the public school is worse or because public school have a little bit more elements to deal with than private school maybe. But at the same time, the the teachers and the and the and the and the students whatever they put in it, they're gonna get out of it. Mm -hmm. That's in public or private school. Yeah, I, I mean, it just I mean, you could go to private well, school and still not get accepted in hell, Yale, or Harvard, but have this guy at the public school get accepted at all of them. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I think uh, uh, I don't have a dog in the fight. All my kids are uh, uh, public school uh, products, but I guess the thing of it is, you probably have a smaller classroom. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say the teachers are better. I mean, everything that's a personal uh, opinion on that. Mm -hmm. I think that you may, from a connection standpoint, you may have. You know, probably some of your different tier, upper tier schools may come to those private schools and look at them, mm -hmm. especially those uh, elite boarding schools and mm -hmm. stuff like that, the military schools. But again, we're talking about straight coming out your pocket paying. Mm -hmm. And I hear a lot of people say, well, it's the better education, this, that, and that. At the end of the day, you got to be realistic about after that high school. And I'm just saying that there should be a return. When I, you know, and I, and I look at a lot of stuff with business, and I, don't, I know everything is not business based in life. But if I pay this amount of money for my child to be educated at this particular school, what's the return for it? Mm -hmm. And you ain't, ain't no way in the hell that I, I feel like you should be paying that kind of money for your kid to go to a school, and I'm talking about a college or university, that they could have went to if you didn't pay nothing at all. Exactly. That shit don't make no sense to me. Exactly. You know, again, that's my personal opinion. But, again, your money spent, and I think you could have saved that same money. Now, again, if you got it like that, you got it like that. But a lot of damn folks don't have it like that. <laughs> you know, just being real is real and everything like that. So I think that's something for uh, people to take in consideration in terms of the value. You, you talking to the people who, who try to figure out how to get it. Exactly. Get it when you talk to the ones who got it and can afford to blow thousand dollars, we talk to them ones like my mama who looked at me and said, college? Ha! Ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, 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 the thing of it is, I, I, I just believe that a lot of times people get misinformed. You know, they get misinformed or they think sometimes, you know, you know, certain things you pay money for is better, but they ain't necessarily the case mm -hmm. with doing it. And, I, and, and I'm a firm believer in if you support your kids and you stay firm behind them and stuff like that, um, your kids will be destined for greatness. Mm -hmm. It just comes to a lot of times how much you're willing to sacrifice to help them uh, get there. Now, that goes to the next tier. We kind of get ready to wrap up the show. We don't have a tip this week, but I kind of want to go on to this conclusion in terms of what we were just talking about with the sacrifice. What I want parents to all understand, too, what all those four uh, things we went over with, the saving, the athletics, academics, and loans, I, I want every parent to understand one thing. This is first and foremost, is that your plan for your kid and they plan for themselves Maybe two whole totally different, different damn things. <laughs> okay? First and foremost. So I don't want to say everything we talked about today is a gamble, but it's a, it's a gamble. <laughs> so, again, that's why I kind of want parents to kind of be gauging their child while we're going through this process. You know, we're doing that. That's why I say, again, if you know you got this, you know, future NASA engineer, cool. 
if you got a kid that's kind of got they got a certain interest they like putting cars together and everything like that cool you kind of get idea they might want to go out of mechanic school they like cutting doing hell hey we got that but if you're on the fence and stuff like that you need to kind of be making sure that hey you're doing some you're not extending yourself too far out there trying to make stuff happen you break your neck because you know to the point we just said you spent over commute to four years twenty thirty forty thousand dollars in private school tutors football training baseball batting and all that ballet and all that kind of stuff and your child say daddy i want to be a plumber <laughs> or daddy i want to go in the army right. mama i'm finna go on the road singing you sitting like what the f-? you know right. i don't know i done did this and you going to say but that's what you wanted to do right that's not what they want to do and does it make it right does it make you right does it make them wrong ain't either way because that's still their life and you got to be realistic i want to tell your parents that don't make sacrifices for your to make sacrifices I ain't saying, but don't make sacrifices for your children that's going to hinder you in life and what i mean by that is support your children 150 percent. but if you know this is something that they're not able to put some skin in the game and help you with it i wouldn't recommend it and i'm being i'm speaking in terms of a person that's been guilty of that you know do this and then you know, son want to do something else. I'm like, look here, this, that, and that. I done did this, but that was my sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Now, the other three, shit, ain't going to happen again. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But you learn. And like I said, I'm not saying don't sacrifice, don't sacrifice for your children, but don't make those sacrifices for your children that can affect you in a negative way. Mm-hmm. You know, you putting certain things off in your life you, you couldn't do for them. And if they choose a different path, now you got friction between y'all. And I don't think that's a good thing to do because, again, that's what they want to do. Now, you can help them in terms of what some of the the pathways we talked about today to help steer them in the right direction to, hey, listen, I'm going to help you with this and help you with that. We can contact these folks. But don't put yourself in a damn situation where you can alter your damn whole lifestyle and your future for somebody else and they may not go that path. Right. Ain't no way in the hell. There's no way in the hell. You're speaking to somebody that's – done that before and i think i'm a very very good father but again parents you can't control that because again that's what you want that's what you want for them and that's great but what they want for themselves can be totally different and that shit can happen in 48 hours <laughs> that they whole change you know i know we done spent all this time going to these you know lessons and recitals but it's time to rap i'm just not feeling it. yeah 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 <laughs> again and what can you say what can you say so listen, hey, this and I think there's a way to go to it without getting too overextended. Again, this has been Deontay Burton, hosting our show, Changing Lives. Make sure you go to the YouTube channel. Please like, share, and subscribe to it. Um, everyone knows I'm an accountant by profession. I own Majestic Business Services. We've been in business 17 years. Please go to our website, www.majesticbiz.com. Our number there is 678-479-4007. Doing real good this tax season. But, again, we always want to do much, much better. Uh, We got a lot of uh, ads and promos streaming on the Internet. So if you catch one on, please hit us up. Don't hesitate to book a question. Again, we're not a fly-by-night organization. We're a fly-by-right organization. So um, I get a lot of calls sometimes. Can you get me this, get me that? No, I can can get you right. (laughs) Now, all that stuff, guaranteed money, can't do that. Again, um, you know, I focus less on getting that big refund more on getting, you know, the IRS not giving you a call, getting you an audit. Right, you know, again, right. and that may not excite too many people, but, again, that's why we've been able to stay in business, you know, 17 years as opposed to some people just doing something because they got, you know, some some free software this year <laughs> and everything <laughs> like that. And you get that letter in the mail a year and a half from now. I've seen it too often. And like right. I said, and, and we're we're part tax business then. We're part hospital when those same folks get bit and they got to come to us a year later. Here hey, guys, uh, here we are. Now we got to do that damage control. <laughs> That's a whole lot cheaper to come to us now than come to us later. Right, Believe right. me with that. But, again, uh, had a great show. Thanks for everybody for tuning in. But, please, again, again, I can't stress to you enough, please subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends, tell your family, everybody about us, everyone. Uh, I love doing this, having a great time doing it. But, please, make sure you t- uh, tune in to us next week. Again, this is Deontay Burden. Our show is changing lives. Love you guys and take care. Uh-huh.